The Super Scooper is one of the most expensive aerial firefighting aircraft ever made, costing around $30 million. It's a giant boat with giant wings, and it's built like a tank. There is no other plane like it in the world. Wildfires can be doused in water with a CL-415 Enhanced Aerial Firefighter in as little as three minutes. Contrast that to this plane from the 1970s, which could drop only 200 gallons at a time. Hello and welcome back to our channel. In this video, we will be talking about the Super Scooper plane. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, then you totally must subscribe to it now. Let's begin. It is the only plane that is designed specifically for fighting wildfires. It costs $30 million, and in just 12 seconds, the CL-415 Enhanced Aerial Firefighter dives 1,400 gallons of water into a body of water and dumps it on raging forest fires. It's expensive for any aircraft to cost $30 million. However, the aerial firefighting asset is actually the most cost-effective. For almost 100 years, planes have been used to fight wildfires, but early attempts were not nearly as effective as they are now. The majority of firefighting aircraft used in the 1950s and 1960s were retired or salvaged aircraft from World War II. The tanks were strapped to the middle, and they were used in a very haphazard, provisional manner. Firefighting planes dropped water droplets in the amount of 150 to 200 gallons at a time. In today's world, it may not have been the most efficient, but it was the most they could do at the time. An airplane explicitly designed to fight fires was contracted to Canadair. The grandfather, the CL215, was designed for this plane. There was a striking similarity between them. Viking Air Limited modernized the CL215 in 2020, updating its avionics system, turbine engines and more by stripping it down to the bare bones. It was created from scratch. The CL415 EAF measures 30 feet tall with a 93-foot wingspan, just 24 feet shorter than a Boeing 737's despite its size and weight. Nearby, you realize what a massive structure it is. However, the aircraft was designed to fly like a much smaller plane despite its size. They certainly don't seem like an acrobatic or stunt plane when you look at them. The aircraft is almost as big as a C-130, and we are flying it at high speeds through highly narrow canyons, at low altitudes, and banked high G-turns. This type of aircraft is scarce to be passed this low and in such hazardous conditions. Super Scooper is one of the specific Type 2 air tankers. Water scooping capabilities enable the airplane to use large quantities of water to fight fires from nearby lakes and reservoirs. Initial attacks with these tankers are quick and effective. Flying at high speed, approximately 100 miles per hour, the aircraft scoops up copious amounts of water into its belly as it flies along the surface of lakes or reservoirs. The planes can gather water in just 12 seconds and subsequently dropped on fires raging out of control. With this ability, skipping a refill station that might be quite far away is no longer necessary. Pilots must be certified to operate a seaplane to ensure the water conditions are safe for scooping. Scoopers are so handy because of their flight control surfaces, or aerodynamic devices that pilots use to adjust and control. An aeroplane's primary control surfaces are ailerons, which contain the plane's roll, rudders, which control the plane's yaw, and elevators, which control the plane's pitch. And in the case of the Super Scooper, those surfaces are oversized. This is important because when you're flying slow and significant, you need to have many ailerons and elevator areas to maneuver the aircraft as rapidly as possible at low speeds. This larger rudder surface area accounts for the Super Scooper's 10 foot shorter and half as long length compared to a Boeing 737-900. The Scooper needs this. It must slow down to 90 knots or just over 100 miles per hour to perform a scoop. This is almost half the aircraft's cruising speed. After identifying the scoop site and coming to the site, you should go through the pre-pickup checklist. The way the aircraft picks up water is by probing down. There is no vacuum, so it scoops it up rather than stopping or sucking it up. It scoops it up through what you see here, the two probes on either side of the keel of the aircraft, which are about the size of your hands when put together, and as soon as you hit the water, they catch. The cockpit is filled with it. Water fills almost immediately. The scooper's tanks hold 1,400 gallons of water and fill up in 12 seconds, during which time the pilot must maintain the plane's speed and direction. You retract the probes after the aircraft and tanks are full. When those probes go up, there is a noticeable surge in the plane. 
take off once the aircraft is back up to speed. With its weight increased to 11,000 pounds, the aircraft can now ascend from the surface using its design. When you look at the wing, you will notice that its curvature is substantial. The lift is caused by camber, which is highly noticeable. Aerodynamics is one aspect of the equation, but it's not the only one. Turboprop engines provide more than enough power to lift the plane off the ground. A shaft horsepower of 2380 is generated on each side. Things like these are highly durable. Although it's never a good idea to hit anything with them, if ash or debris is being pushed up through the thermals of the fire, these engines will chew through it and keep running. That allows the scooper to ascend back up to its previous altitude within approximately three minutes. Hence, when we're waiting for the drop, the air attack gets us where we need to be. They are in contact with the people on the ground who are requesting water. The pilot then calculates the terrain, the wind and their altitude before pressing the button to make the drop. When the pilot is ready to drop the load, they will push the water drop button. 1400 gallons of water are released by opening the drop doors on the keel. In mere seconds, the entire load on the aircraft will drop, giving the pilot very little time to manoeuvre. Although it is typically slower and lower in altitude than other firefighting aircraft, the Super Scooper's high lift wing and turboprop engine allow it to attack forest fires with greater efficiency. A Super Scooper can drop firefighting supplies from as low as 100 feet above an area, unlike the 747 Super Tanker and DC-10, which can drop from 200 to 800 feet. A firefighter should have the ability to quickly adapt to changes in terrain, other aircraft in the region or obstacles emerging from the smoke when fighting fires at low altitudes and flying through mountains and smoke. Instead of refilling on the ground, the scooper can head back to the water source after making the drop. It can go up to six hours between refuelings, which is more than twice as long as other aircraft that need to refuel every two hours. In contrast to more traditional tankers that commonly can only transport a fraction of that amount, this aircraft can transport 150,000 gallons in one service day, despite the sticker price. An aerial firefighting asset, it's the most efficient and cost-effective. When it's painted like that, it's hard to miss. The paint job on these aircraft is very flashy, and one of the questions we're asked quite often is, why is it painted that way? Despite the super-dense smoke, it is essential to be visible. When these guys fight the fires, it's a very action-packed circuit and safety is the primary goal. The next game-changing innovation won't come from the planes themselves for aerial fighters. Data will soon drive air firefighting. It's about understanding what the fire is doing, where it's going and where it's coming from, and being able to share that data with as vast a population as possible. As a result, it can better inform aerial response, better inform ground response and make sure that those citizens affected by the incident get the best information possible to protect themselves, their families and their livelihoods. Meanwhile, aerial firefighting aircraft like the Super Scooper is tasked with putting out forest fires. So that's all the time we had today, folks. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel to view more of our amazing videos. Also, don't forget to hit the bell icon to remain updated about all our future videos. See you soon in the next video.